about it. Yeah, there are really no tricks about it. Uh, they're good. Um, you know, they play with high energy, high motor guys, uh, so they can win their one-on-one -on -one matchups. They don't necessarily have to blitz. Uh, they got, you know, four or five guys that can rush the passer one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, and then when they do blitz, they mix it up. You know, they're kind of like our defense. They're in and out of three-man front, four-man front. So uh, it's going to be important for our center to ID the front. And uh, But the thing about Wisconsin, they play with their hair on fire. And we've got to make sure we match their intensity or else uh, they're going to get after us. That's challenging because offensive linemen have to play hard, but they got to play with technique. So how, how do offensive linemen handle that? that sort of barrage coming at them and then communicate yeah. effectively yeah. where people are going. Well, the first thing, they have to know what they're doing. You know, they have to know what they're doing. If there's any doubt, any hesitation on what their assignment is, they're done. So we've got to make sure they know what they're doing. And then once they know what they're doing, they recognize what's going on. We've had good practices. Where we've given them all the looks we're going to face. Coach Austin does a great job with them up front. The bye week, we went good on good, so they went against our D-line. So uh, they've had a good week of practice, and they're, they're ready to go. How do you approach preparing for game where you're expecting to have fewer offensive snaps? Yeah, we told the guys day one, or on Monday that uh, you know each play we've got to execute at a high level because we went through their, the season and the number of snaps the opposing uh, offenses have gotten and it's been 50, 55 so we're thinking you know, 55, 60 plays and so we've got to maximize those plays. We've got to be efficient. We can't have turnovers, penalties or else uh, it's going to be a long day. So the guys understand the sense of urgency and how each play really does matter. Is there a way to set that tone early in the game? Okay. Set the tone in terms of as far as uh, making each play matter, going for maybe yeah. Jumps. Well, as coaches, we've got to we got to put our guys in the best play possible, and uh, there's different ways you can do that. But we've got to make sure we're on our game and make sure that uh, we're not wasting plays, so to speak. And we've got to make sure we see the coverage, identify the front, and put our guys in the best positions to make plays. When you're facing a team that controls time of possession yeah. like them, does that change the way an offense? Or yeah, you can't get frustrated, but the real goal is you got to score. You know, if you don't score, last year we went up there and uh, first drive, we moved the ball down the field and had to punt, second drive, and they scored, second drive, field goal. You're not going to win with field goals. So you got to maximize each drive, each play. you got to score touchdowns when you get in the red zone because if you don't, then you're not going to see the ball a lot. So uh, we got to stay poised on the sideline. Um, but I, I feel good about how our defense has been playing, that they're going to be able to slow them down. Down and and uh, when we do get our chances, we gotta we gotta make the most of it. Not to beat a dead horse, but you guys generally want to. Explosive plays, kind of shorter drives. Do yeah. you try and change that up a little bit, knowing that they're going to yeah. try and hold the ball? We want to score touchdowns. Yeah. So if it means it means playing fast, explosive, we got to score points. And when it, that's what it comes down to. And we're going to be smart as a staff and mix things up in yeah. terms of our tempo and things and you know, what we do. But uh, ultimately, we got we got to score. And uh, you know they're they're great. They don't have no weaknesses on defense. I mean, up front they get after. Secondary wise, uh, you know they're consistent. They're sound. They don't do a whole lot, but what they do, they do well. Um, so we've got to be on it, and, and when the big play opportunities come, we've got to we've got to make the most of them. With the, with the success you guys had at UCF with big body X and Z guys, yeah. how does yeah. a guy like Chris Hickman help you with that position, build depth in that way? Yeah, he's been good. Uh, you know, we were kind of playing him at tight end, also playing him at receiver, outside, inside. So uh, you know, he's gonna he's gonna he's, he has two more games left, I believe. Yeah, we're still trying to redshirt him, uh, so he'll he'll see two more games and then going into the spring, but he's going to have the ability, depending on what his body does, to either play, uh, be, a, be a tight end, um, maybe be an outside receiver, maybe, you know, just a hybrid type guy that can create mismatches on, on opposing defenses. Since you have him, though, as a wide receiver on the depth chart right now, what are you hoping to see from him, at least in the short term at yeah. that spot? Yeah, just depth. Um, you know, he can play inside, um, so he adds more depth inside, a bigger body inside. Um, you know, we can put him in as we did last game and he can line up in the backfield and maybe block a defensive end. And so, uh, you know, opposing defenses don't know if he's going to be actually flexed out as a receiver, as a tight end. He's going to be in the core as a, as a tight end, as a blocker. So um, we just want him to get better each day. And just being that receiver and working the techniques of a, of a wide out has made him, made him a lot
lot better and made him a lot versatile. With young guys like Hickman, can you put them out whenever, or do you have to have like a package and play? Yeah, like, this yeah. Is your yeah. Going in the game, we kind of have a package for him. He kind of knows what plays he's going to be featured in, um, which will just allow him to play fast and and uh, and be successful. So we'll kind of narrow down w what plays he's going to be in on, and so he can be effective. Adrian had a play that four weeks when he played against Purdue. Have you seen him use that game and kind of his momentum in the fourth quarter as he's practiced in the last couple? Yeah, yeah. He did a great job the last two drives of uh, or second to the Purdue game. Um, you know, making plays, uh, being more aggressive with his legs. Uh, had a good bye week against our defense. You know, I think he's 100% he's healthy. Um, so we're expecting him to get back to form. And, and uh, we're going to need him to utilize his legs because things are going to break down. They've got great pass rushers. And so he's got to be able, like he did last year, be able to beat them with his legs and create some big plays running the football. Obviously, you kind of wanted to respond after getting banged up late in that game. Has he been able to get back up to yeah, he's, he's uh, we'll see, we'll see. He's kind of banged up, but uh, you know, he's 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 working to get back, and uh, uh, we'll just you know, we, we got to play what we have, and, and we'll kind of see game day, game time if he's uh, what he can do. And and like I said, we're going to put him in the best situations to be successful, and so we'll just have to kind of wait and see. You feel like your offense felt refreshed after the bye week, yeah. We wanted to, you know, long, long season, we wanted him to recover, um, you know, get healthy, so to speak, uh, but also get some good on good and, 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 and uh, you know, work on our fundamentals and our details. So I think we accomplished all that in the bye week and um, the guys are hungry and ready for a, a great Wisconsin team, top 20 ranked team in the country coming to our place. Um, should have a great crowd and uh, a great opportunity to do something special. How Wednesday's been as far as closing, third downs, red zones? Yeah, this third down is usually, or Wednesday is usually situational. Uh, so we get a lot of third down looks, um, red zone, uh, you know, our base. So our guys really know what we're going to do, when we're going to run it. Um, and so they've, they've locked in, had a good Wednesday. And then, you know, tomorrow we just kind of walk through and, and put the finishing touches on it. But uh, very pleased with this week, how the guys have prepared, the attitude. Sometimes things aren't going your way, four and five. You're down. You got to pull their teeth to get out to practice. Those, our guys have been ready to go, and, and uh, we've had great energy and enthusiasm. So, looking forward to Saturday.